All right, welcome back. Uh, by the way, you'll see I'll be filming the lectures from various locations around the city. Uh, but uh, I think a, a great way to introduce the course will be to either uh, download the Flower Country USA uh, PowerPoint file in Moodle. And by the way, I should say this, we're, I'm not going to use Camtasia to film the presentations and have a small picture of me down at the bottom. Several of our students suggested not to do that, to just videotape my lectures and you all can follow along uh, slide by slide. So either print out two slides per page uh, or download into a laptop and follow along with me. I will let you know every time I, I advance a, a slide. So Flower Country USA was a major new startup in Dallas, Texas in the early 1990s. Mike Waterman, one of the best entrepreneurial CEOs I ever had the occasion to work with, uh, decided that he wanted to disrupt the mom and pop flower cottage industry. Now, by that I mean, how many of you all have not gone into your local flower store? You needed a dozen roses, you needed a corsage for a dance, something like that. You, you, you get the picture. At the time, there were 17,000 of those kinds of stores in the United States. And the reason why we call that a mom and pop kind of, uh, mom and pop cottage industry is uh, it's more of a lifestyle business. The husband and wife or the owner uh, would run their business expecting to pay themselves and their employees and break even. In other words, it was not expected to be a large wealth creating uh, venture. Mike Waterman had a different idea. And by the way, prior to this, he had had a long history of founding and growing companies uh, that created a lot of wealth. There were key visible players in this venture. Uh, for instance, Fred Smith, you may recognize as the founder, and still founder and CEO of FedEx. Uh, Fred and Mike were Yale roommates together. Clark Johnson, then the CEO of McGregor Sports and many others were both shareholders and members of the board of directors. Since Mike didn't know the business, he uh, bought a company in San Antonio called Flowers to Go. It was a pretty good uh, of the mom and pop variety so that uh, he and I and his team could learn the industry. I was called in to be the chief strategist of the venture after a first gentleman uh, was brought in and, and Mike and that gentleman didn't see eye to eye and so he was relieved of his duties. What I'm going to describe to you is a totally different experience in retail cut flowers. If you look at one of those usual 17,000 stores you would walk in, there's a front counter, uh, you, would, you had some arrangements that you could buy, maybe some were in catalog. Um, they would go, and sometimes you could, you could stay there and they'd make those to go. So their production of the flower arrangements was in the back of the store. Um, you know, you, you, uh, you bought your, your arrangements and off you went. Uh, some of those, those uh, establishments also delivered, usually in their own cars. So Mike had a different idea. He wanted to have a bold major new venture that would, as we will learn throughout the course, consolidate what we call a very fragmented industry. If you have a lot of competitors in an industry, 17,000 is a lot, that's called a very fragmented industry. If there's only a few competitors, like in the auto, auto uh, making business, General Motors, Ford, etc., that's called a very concentrated industry. The venture was vertically integrated. Notice I'm using some terms uh, that we will learn, so this is more of an overview to the dynamics of strategy. We were vertically integrated short of actually growing flowers. So we had retail stores, we had uh, capability to design and produce the, the flower arrangements, and then we would source or buy raw material uh, flowers from anywhere all over the world, Hawaii, Holland, South America, what have you. I'm not a flower person, but these arrangements were knocked out. FedEx even designed containers that would increase uh, at about four days of shelf life to the cut flowers. The flowers 
shipped in these containers by airplane would fly into, in this case, Dallas-Fort Worth Airport and deliver those to a main distribution center, which was also the main production. Uh, each distribution center in the model uh, would serve up to 13 stores in each of the metro areas. We started in Dallas-Fort Worth. You can picture then uh, tables, basically, and the, 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 the designs would be assembled, kind of going down an assembly line uh, until the, you know, they were finished and, and then they would, be, they would be stored momentarily. Uh, all of that activity was designed, excuse me, was supervised by a lead distribution center designer. The head guru of all design was a fellow uh, that we acquired from a really cool uh, flower company, one, still one of those small ones, called Zen Flowers in Dallas. And his, as I said, I'm not a flower person, but his designs were truly uh, remarkable. The, the arrangements of flowers would be trucked out to the stores at 5 a.m. each morning. And the trucks we leased actually from one of the phone companies, and they outfitted them for us. And, and painted the outside and they were rolling advertisements for Flower Country USA. So they were, it was like uh, uh, advertisements on wheels. So once the arrangements hit the store, this is where things really began to be exciting. The stores themselves were half the square footage of a normal retail mom and pop uh, uh, outfit. We one of the strategic initiatives was to design the best in-store shopping experience possible uh, in the business. Store fixtures, those, those in retail, those are the things that would be that would have the arrangement sitting on top of, were uh, were made and architecturally aligned for dramatic rendering of arrangements. There was neat track lighting. There was music uh, as people would enter the store, they would get hit with a little fragrance, fragrance in, fa in fact. So the business model allowed us to have only two employees per store and actually it called for one employee per store and their job was to manage the customer experience and ring up the sales at the cash register. Uh, remember this was in the early 90s so this was before the internet but uh, we also wanted as part of the strategy is to develop the the best customer relationship management database. We would know when birth, each customer's birthday, anniversaries, births, all those kinds of things would be uh, in our background database. We began to sell and the arrangements were flying off of the shelves and uh, we did some limited distribution. Neiman Marcus, the very upscale retailer, actually approached us to sell through their Christmas catalog. From that um, first major metro in Dallas, our plan called for a dramatic geometric growth through other metro cities throughout the United States. Needless to say, the industry was in a state of shock. The trade uh, magazines for the cut flower industry were claiming that we were unfair, um, they were citing you know, unfair competition, that kind of a thing. We were the fastest growing retailer in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex before the venture actually went chapter seven, which will be a story for later on in the course. It's a fascinating story. So looking at, at the, the two slides there, and I should have said that just, just two slides, slides number two and three, I want you to think through what are the attributes of that strategy? How was it different than the normal mom and pop store? And that will be the subject of our first discussion board coming up in week 1A.